from watching Top Flight Family. We're the Sinyovi family from New York City. And last year, we visited 21 resorts in 2021. Now that major cities around the world have reopened, this year, we're visiting 22 cities in 2022. This is city number five. <laughs> I think they like it. <laughs> and then we have prepared something Ooh. for you as well. And hope you're going to enjoy Ooh. the Four Seasons video. <laughs> yes. Yeah, wow. We have Ooh, beautiful. <laughs> oh my god, no way. How did they do so that? It's adorable. We stayed at Four Seasons Hotel Abu Dhabi at Al Maria Island. Many thanks to the property for hosting us. It's a beautiful property with stunning views of the city from just about every corner. Of course, you can't come to the UAE and not do a desert safari. This was one of Sean and Ella's favorite memories from our last trip here, so we had to do it again. <laughs> Our driver right now was taking out some of the air in the tires because we're about to start the dune bashing. Ready? Yeah! 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 Oh my god. <laughs> we were in the UAE, the girls were not big fans of the camels. It was keep making the noise, and I was really scared. The camel behind me and daddy kept burping a lot and making your noises and swallowing loudly, and he was rubbing his face to get me and daddy's leg, and it was scary, and he was burping on me. But this time, it was a totally different experience. photographer in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> Seriously, our dune bashing driver Razak could not only rock the heck out of some sand dunes in a 4x4, but he also had a masterful command of photography. Just check out these amazing shots he got of us in the desert. Well, these are some of the best photos we got from this trip, thank you. <laughs> By the way, our family is visiting 22 cities in 2022, and Abu Dhabi is the fifth one we've visited so far. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on the next city we'll be visiting. After camel riding, it was time to do some sandboarding. One of my goals for this trip to the Gulf region was to do a deep dive into the traditional culture here. In Doha, we learned about the history of pearl diving, which was practiced by the Hadar people who lived in coastal villages. In Dubai, we learned about the traditional sport of camel racing, practiced by the Bedouins who were the desert-dwelling nomadic people. And on this trip to Abu Dhabi, we wanted to learn about the other big Bedouin sport, falconry. 
Falconry is the ancient art of hunting wild animals using a trained bird of prey, and it's been practiced in the Arab world for at least 2,500 years. For the Bedouin people, falconry was originally a means of survival. With such limited food options in the desert, being able to train birds to hunt for animals was a way to provide extra food for their families in such a hostile environment. Because falcons were an important survival tool, they became revered within the culture. The falcon is the national bird of the UAE, and to the people of this country, it symbolizes power and strength. Today, hunting with falcons is actually outlawed in the UAE in order to protect endangered species. But falconry still plays an important part in the culture. Only today, it's about racing, not hunting. Falcon racing has become a huge industry in the UAE. The President Cup is probably the biggest event of the year. Held each January at the Abu Dhabi Falconers Club, it offers $11 million in prize money. Falcons are extremely expensive to purchase. In 2021, a new world record was set in Saudi Arabia when a U.S. white jur falcon was sold at auction for 1.75 million Saudi rials, or more than 450,000 U.S. dollars. Falcons in the UAE often live a life of luxury. They have their own passports, they fly first or business class, and they receive top-notch medical care. Hey guys, so we are at Abu Dhabi Falcon Hospital, which is the world's largest falcon hospital. So this is where owners of falcons come to bring their birds when they are injured or need surgery or just for general checkups. And we're going to go inside and see exactly what they do inside. The medical team showed us how they use anesthetic gas to put the falcon to sleep so that they can perform simple maintenance procedures like trimming their talons. Okay, now the bird is fully asleep now. So while they are sitting, you can see they are very small. So when you open the wing, the wingspan compared to the body, wow. you can see how they are big. So we have to clip these talons at least two or three times in a year. But if you do kind of things, we are using kind of trimmer to make the filing. We apply some cream, with a massage, with a shiny. Another common procedure done in this part of the hospital is replacing feathers that have fallen out in order to avoid any balance issues as the birds fly. The molting time, whatever feather they are losing, this all the feathers, we will keep it as a like spare ones. The hospital keeps spare feathers on hand for all breeds of falcons. Wrap firmly, arm standing like this. She will sit here while eating. She will try to take it out of your hand and mm -hmm. sleep on the Then one of our fellow visitors to the hospital got to experience what it's like to feed a falcon. The hospital has two operating theaters, an ICU, and an air-conditioned Falcon Hotel where birds can stay short or long-term. So when we made plans to come to this Falcon Hospital, I did not realize it was going to be this huge compound. Like I actually thought it would just be like a building in the city. Um, but this place is massive. It's literally a compound. There's tons of buildings. Look, they even have their own coffee shop here. This is so cool. I guess it's for visitors and then also, of course, for the owners. Let's see what's going on over here. <laughs> Bro, do you know how, like, Sean knows it and then I love Baby Yoda? Uh-huh. Look at that. How did they know? Oh my god. I love that picture, by the way. Aww. This is when I was making the water for the lady. Yeah. Can I, can I just smell this? 
<laughs> it smells really good. So another nice surprise that we came back to is the shoe rack. Um, this wasn't here earlier, but I guess they saw that our shoes were getting a little out of control. So they provided us with this rack, which is awesome. It just makes everything feel so homey. Of course, Ella did not put her shoes on the rack. There we go. Oh, and another thing is that they noticed that last night I had taken an extra pillow from the girls' room. And so today they brought me my own extra pillow. It's like all these small touches that just makes Four Seasons stays just always that extra special. We decided to hit two of Abu Dhabi's most popular kids attractions in a single day. First up was Warner Brothers World. This 1.65 million square foot facility is the world's first ever Warner Brothers branded indoor theme park. It has 29 different rides and attractions, as well as themed lands like Bedrock, Dynamite Gulch, Cartoon Junction, Gotham City, and Metropolis. Time to head to Ferrari World. This 925,000 square foot facility is home to the world's fastest roller coaster and the highest loop ride. It's also the first Ferrari branded theme park in the world and has over 40 different rides and attractions. The rule about the masks that you can't wear a surgical mask, it has to be fabric. Oh it just, it wow, lucky I got an extra. Oh my gosh. Read the note. Season. 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 You guys. Sean, it's backwards, but it, oh, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Let your. Oh, God. Oh, this is probably for when you do the, um, the spa. Oh. Oh, it is. Let your creativity shine, and we hope you create some masterpieces which you are going to cherish back home. Aww. The hospitality at Four Seasons Abu Dhabi was really incredible. It felt like every time we came back to the suite, there was a new surprise waiting for us. So shout out to the team at the property because I can't even begin to explain how welcome they made us feel. The room service was incredible. We loved the afternoon tea. The spa was phenomenal. And we had such a fun meal at Butcher and Still, which is the 1920s prohibition era themed Chicago steakhouse at the property. Chef Marshall Allen Roth took us on a behind the scenes tour, including the private dining room where the level of detail was incredible. Oh. <laughs> right? No way, so cool. Wow. You have jewelry for your ladies. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, wow. One of the biggest attractions in Abu Dhabi is the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque. 
At over 230,000 square feet, it's not only one of the largest mosques in the world. To me, it's a serious contender for being the most beautiful building in the world. We absolutely loved our visit to the Grand Mosque last time we were in the UAE, so we made coming back here a priority for this trip. All right, so one thing that's new here since we were last at the Grand Mosque is this big mall down here. And so it's actually very smart because there's all these clothing stores because the mosque has very strict uh, clothing rules, which we're pretty familiar with the rules having been here before. Um, but Serge decided to go full in. Let me show you. Serge. You, you so went for the full look. I love it. How does it feel? It's like so comfortable. Yeah, so very it. light. Yeah, and this is like the... And it fits perfectly. Yeah, I'm surprised. I mean, it's like usually paper. are too short it in the arms stiff, or... Like yeah. paper, but it's There's so like soft. two different kinds of material. This is like the, the nicer material. Mm -hmm. So this one fits, fits beautiful. Love it. After the mosque, we stopped at Emirates Palace. I'm not sure why the palm trees here were in such a sad state, but the views were still incredible from here. Okay, it's so funny that there's the store here in this mall. So basically, Giordano is like a Hong Kong brand. So it's something that I grew up with. It's sort of like, Hong Kong's version of Old Navy. It's so funny that they have Giordano in this random local mall in Abu Dhabi. After lunch, we took a very long drive. Our destination? Qasr al Sarab Desert Resort by Anantara, a luxury desert resort that's about two hours from Abu Dhabi city center. It's located in the Rub al Khali, also known as the Empty Quarter. This is the largest area of continuous sand in the world, and it covers a third of the Arabian Peninsula. The resort offers many different desert adventures, including the chance to learn falconry firsthand. What you guys get? Oh my god, so cute. <laughs> Many thanks to the property for gifting us this experience. The Bedouin people used to survive in the desert primarily on a diet of milk, dates, and rice. But for a few months during the year, they had the opportunity to add some meat to their diets as well. In the late fall and early winter, falcons would migrate from Europe or Central Asia, flying through the Arabian Peninsula on their way to Africa. And this is when the Bedouins would have the opportunity to trap falcons and train them to hunt for wild game. Falconer Davies explained why this is what made Arabs among the most skilled falconers in the world. They had, they had six months to the falcon. Right. So six months to train the falcon and start hunting with it. More time you took training a falcon, the more your family was going to start. Mm. So then that six months, and that's why the, the Arabic people are known as one of the best when it comes to falcon training. Because they did it under six months. Mm. Once summer comes, they'll release falcons back into the world. Mm -hmm. Each and every year they do falcons. Davy's colleague Sabir started by explaining how the Bedouins used falcons and saluki dogs together to hunt. They would then use the falcons to then capture a certain bird called Barabas. It's like a desert type uh, turkey. Mm -hmm. So they used the saluki dogs and the falcons together as in Arabian culture. And what they did was they used the salukis to then chase the birds out of any bush. As the birds would then fly into the air, they release the falcon to capture the bird. Oh. Because the way falcon hunts it normally captures the prey in the air. As they captured the prey in the air, they would then hold the Hubara Basta down until the Arabic people, the Bedouins back in the days, would then have um, take the Hubara Basta from the falcon. Mm -hmm. So they do something called the trade. So what they did was they would then have the club on the left hand with a piece of food for the falcon. Mm -hmm. And as the falcon would hold the bird down, um, they would do the trade. They put the food on the club. The falcon would jump to the club, and that one that they captured, they would then use it as dinner. 
then it was time to try some falconry. So this is what a full chick looks like. Is it alive? Yeah. So we remove the yolk and the cut. Afterwards, we feed them. Uh, for owls, they swallow the prey whole. Mm. Other birds, they take it piece by piece. Mm. Come on! Oh boy. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Right, boss? She's trying to adjust until she When it comes to tourism in the UAE, Abu Dhabi is often overshadowed by Dubai. Many leisure travelers to Abu Dhabi never even stay the night here. Instead, they base their vacation out of Dubai and just do a day trip out to Abu Dhabi to see one or two attractions. I have to confess that we did this too last time we were here. But I'm so glad that on this trip back to the UAE, we took the time to explore Abu Dhabi in its own right. It's a beautiful city where you can learn about the past and look to the future. Okay, that was city number five of the 22 cities we're visiting in 2022. If you'd like to check out city number six, just click that video right there. If you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. And follow us on TikTok and Instagram at Top Flight Family. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.